Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Were you ever uh, tempted just to throw up your hands and say, I'm tired of dealing with this garbage and people double cross you, taking your idea and doing it themselves, where you had built the product for them and branded it under their name. Have you ever thought about just selling out and getting out of the game and doing something else? Me personally, not, but maybe people around me, maybe families, and maybe, yeah, it's maybe time, but I'm okay. I get 60 this year and I still think I love this work and I want to get a new bike computer on the market and we just developed some new power meters and all the pros love it they love it and maybe it's time maybe in five years or in eight years right now not right now it's, not. it's still exciting for you because the process the possibility of creating something better because there is new materials new technology and new components out there that weren't there in the past. And so I guess it's fun to be in the game and continue to refine what you created in the beginning. You know, it's like Apple. You're right. There are a lot of new components and they are super good. But right now, it's very difficult to get. You know, you should not forget there's a war in Ukraine. Then there was the COVID. So all these new components, you have to fight to get them. But these are all communication, GPS, navigation components. They would be really helpful also for a new bike computer. A new bike computer would be fantastic that can, if you have your display, see the locations of your teammates, you get SMS text, you get all this information on your bike computer. And then even you do not need the phone in the back of your race shirt. When you have a crash, it breaks your ribs. This should be all in the bike computer, in your head unit. You have one computer on the bike, and anyway, the future should be, there should be the bike computer integrated in the bike. There should be one battery on the bike. You need not to charge the shifter, the backlight, the front light, the bike computer, the front derailleur. You have now six, seven, eight batteries on the bike. This is bullshit. There should be a much better integration on your car. You have a full tank and you put in the gasoline and you have not to think about to charge all the batteries. So there should be a complete rethinking on the bike. I have here cyclists. They come with this SRAM components and they said, my shifter is not working. I told them, if you change the battery in the handlebar, are the batteries in? I did not know. Yeah, you need to change. And now I cannot ride my bike. What battery do I need? I don't know. I open the handlebar and change your battery. I said, what bullshit is this? Yeah. So there should be a rethinking on the whole bike thing. You need a bike with one battery and one charging pin. And then you charge every battery on the bike, whatever it is. The bike computer, the light, the shifting, everything. This is where the development should go. But then all the bike companies have to speak together and make to agree to one system. Because you as a consumer do want to buy the light from this company and then it should you want to put this on the bike and it should work. The car industry, whatever, it's better. Look in the past. If you look 30 years back, you have one chain. Now you have a Shimano chain or a SRAM chain. They do not work together. You have 11 or 12 speed or maybe 13 speed. So you need different chains. You need a different wheel. You have all the different pedals. You have a look pedal, a time pedal, a Shimano pedal, a speed play pedal, all these different cleats. It doesn't work together. This is too much. There should be at least something more standardized that it makes it easier to change components. But every company Shimano wants that you use only Shimano. SRAM wants only SRAM. Campagnolo only Campagnolo. But for the industry, I think this kills. What? Let me ask you this. You've, as you got into the process of getting your degree, getting out, putting your product together, you met a lot of high powered engineers and high achievers in the world of science and research. 
and I'm going to ask you about athletes in a minute, but what did you notice about these people that in the world of science, engineering, and development, the people at the top of their game, who, how they thought, how they reasoned, how they went about things, what was your, did you have any impressions yeah. about them? Did you learn anything from them about the way they went about solving problems and approaching difficult subjects, unraveling these mysteries? So when I worked with the German Federation, there was the East German FES, Forschung Institut Entwicklung Sportgeräte. I worked with them for the German Federation. Then for the Olympic Games in Atlanta, there was GT, the bike sponsor, and they made the super bike. And as far as I know, they made first a bike in aluminium, where I think USA Cycling had one of the best performance in the team pursuit at the, Olymp at the World Championship in Sicily, in Palermo. The year later, they made a nice carbon bike. So this was GT. Then later, when I worked with Bian de Ries, it was Fausto Pinarello. He was really interested to make a really good bike for Team Telecom. Because before, he made the SWAT bike for Miguel Indurain. Maybe you remember the bike the, with the shape. It was called SWAT. Miguel Indurain used for the Tour de France. Right, right. And the later, Telecom changed from Pinarello to Giant. And with Giant, it was the first scientific work to make a bike frame really better. So they put strain gauges on the frame. We had a power meter on, and then you had Eric Zabel to do a sprint. Then you had Jan Ulrich doing a long endurance climb, and all this to measure the stress on the frame. So this was giant. They really followed up with a really strong development on the scientific way to make the bike frame better. So there were companies, they were really high developed high scientific development. But also okay. the work, let's say, maybe you know Peter Keen. He was the coach of Chris Boardman. When he did the hour record, he was a professor at the university in Eastbourne. And later he transferred, let's say, the British cycling to Manchester. And he gave up all this job to Braceford because he later was responsible for the Olympics in, in, Los in London. Maybe you have to make a research brace for this now, the boss, or was the boss after Peter Keane of British Cycling. But Peter Keane was the initiator of the British Lottery to start the cycling, let's say, in Manchester and, and the strengths of British Cycling, like with Cavendish, with, with all the Tour de France winners of British Cycling. This was... Well, let's talk about... How did this impact you? Because behind all of these products and improvements and companies making that are people, and I'm sure you've met a lot of them and dealt with them and talked with them. Us, Going through the Olympic experience, how did that impact you? Us first, they preferred all my products. So they said, okay, we <laughs> power meters, we buy your power meter. <laughs> later, let's say example was the team um, Ineos, or it was called before Team Sky. They were all on SM, but at the end, they needed money. Yeah. And they said, okay, stages pays more, we go to stages. And I don't pay. I give them product and I can pay. And they said, okay, stages pays and you pay not, so we go to stages. Said, okay, we use a stages power meter. And the same was with other teams. So they needed money. At the end, the team need money and they search money. And they... At one point, they did not look for the quality anymore of the power meter as it was before because they want money because the cyclists cost much more now than 20 years ago. If you look what they get now and what they got 20 years ago, there's a huge difference, a huge right. difference. But cyclists cannot really attract, I would say, the big business. Why is Apple or, let's say, uh, Microsoft or let's say Google, do not put any money in cycling. These are multi-billion companies. Why they don't say, okay, let's do a cycling team. It costs not much. It's maybe 50 million a year, and we make them for 10 years. They don't do this. Why? Why do not all the big... In the US, you have the biggest companies of the world. Why does not anyone put any cent into cycling? 
this is the question. Because the image of cycling is not the super good by the doping. Yeah, that was the black guy and haven't quite even got that in the rear view mirror totally yet. I think there was, once the stain is there, you know, it's hard to uh, ride away from it. But the... What was it like? You still have to pay the price. If you're an athlete getting on a bike, you still have to make all the effort. What impressed you getting around and dealing with the Greg LeMond's type people of the world and the Lance Armstrong? I was wondering, personally, what did you observe about how they went about their business? What did you learn personally from them? Did it make an impact on you? Armstrong has a complete different personality than Greg Lemond. Greg Lemond is a humbling guy, a humbling, cozy guy. You can go out in a bar, enjoy the evening, and he would share. And Armstrong is much more self centered. <laughs> yeah, but this gives him the strength to win seven times the tour. Do not crash out, do not get sick, have the best team, have the best suppliers, have the best coach, have the best food. So this is the, the difference. But as a person, you want to spend an evening, have a nice evening. Probably you would say maybe it's more nice with Greg Lemon. Maybe he would also at the end of the day pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's this is my experience. But Armstrong needed probably this to win seven times tour even they take away all the wins but he did everything to achieve what his goal was thanks for listening to the million dollar mastermind if you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode please take a minute and leave us a five-star review your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whitealamwinning.com. Thanks for listening.